So I had a customer bring me the Sega Genesis. The CD player is the problem he's having. And he wanted me to check this out. And so I understand these things have a bunch of bad capacitors in them. So I'm gonna tear this apart and we'll do some ESR checks on the capacitors. So this one is an MK4102. So let's go ahead and get the screws out of it and do some ESR checks on the capacitors in the unit. Well, there is what it looks like with the top removed. I still have these metal shields I need to get out of the way. So here's the optical block. It's basically just a CD player. I think it might be a Sanyo version. I'm not quite sure, but it's just a regular CD player. Nothing special about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cover off and we'll reveal the capacitors that live underneath that cover. Okay, well here it is with the cover removed. You can see many capacitors. The things I really wanna check are like these large capacitors and I'll probably end up doing my trick where I unsolder one lead of them. Although check out this fuse, it looks like someone has replaced that in the past. It's kinda of laying over sideways, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but let's go ahead and get the board completely out of this unit and then we'll ESR every capacitor in the unit and see how they fare. So it's kind of tough to see, but right there in the center of your screen is a couple of solder pads. Now, before you unplug the laser from the main board, you want to bridge those solder pads. So that puts a dead short across the laser diode and it prevents electrostatic discharge while you have the laser completely disconnected. These things are static sensitive. So this is one step you do not want to forget. Just like that, just a solder blob across the two pads. Now the optical pickup can be removed from the main board without fear of damage to the laser diode. All right, now you can simply just unplug these three connectors. They are keyed differently so they won't go back in the same location. There we go, the board is completely free from the unit. Now we can go ahead and check those capacitors. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and make sure the leads are at zero. They are 0 .00 ohms, absolutely perfect. So next we'll just come in here and check some of these little caps right here. That's a 3.3, four and a half ohms. I'm very good with this. This is a 100.07. This is a 3.3, two and a half ohms, perfectly fine. This is a 100.17, very good for a small capacitor. Another 100.45. This one is a 10.98, 4.7, 0 0.83 ohms. This is a 47.82 ohms, 100 microfarad, 0.04, a 0.47 microfarad, four and a half ohms, I'm good with that. This one is a one microfarad cap, 3.2 ohms, that's fine. Another one microfarad cap, 3.3 ohms, good with that. This one is a 10.05, and another 10.04. I suspect these are probably in parallel all over the board because they're next to the RAM chips. Another 10.04, another 10.04, 0.02 on a, another 10, 0.02, another 10, 0.02, another 10, 0.97, that is another 10, 0.02, another 10, 0.02, another 10. These are both 10s. One ohm, one ohm, one ohm, one ohm. This one is a 100. 0 0.02, another 10, 0 0.01, another 10, one ohm. 0 0.01, this is a 100, 0 0.01. This is a 10, 0 0.96, and another 10, 0 0.97, another 10, one ohm. And another 10, one ohm. We're nearing the end. Another 10, 0.92. Another 10, 0.94. And another 10, 0.95. Another 10 at 0.94. And a 100 at 0.4 ohms. So next, I wanna go ahead and test this capacitor, this capacitor, and this capacitor, as well as this one. These four capacitors, but because they're such large caps, I'm gonna do a before and after test. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and check those big filter caps. I've got one lead unsoldered on each capacitor, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a pad test, and then a capacitor test, and we should see two different values. So right there, I see 0 0.04 ohms on the pad, and I see 0 0.09 ohms on the capacitor, and then both together, I get a 0 0.02 ohms. So that tells me that the capacitor is, in fact, unsoldered and free from the pad. So here's the pad. 0.45 ohms. Here is the capacitor, 0.15 ohms. The pad is 9.1 ohms. The capacitor is 0.15 ohms. The pad, 9.1. The capacitor, 0.14. The pad is 0.04. The capacitor itself is 0.09. I don't think that's the problem this customer is having is bad capacitors. They all seem to check okay. So because we have all these 10 microfarad capacitors, and I suspect that they're all in parallel, I went ahead and pulled one of them out. It's between these two memory chips. So it's the DC input buffer for these chips to make sure it has good solid power. And I zeroed my leads out, and I've got 0, 0.0 ohms. And let's just go ahead and check what this capacitor checks like out of the circuit, because if there's 10 or 20 of them in circuit. And this one measures 0.73 ohms. Not too terribly bad for a little 10 microfarad capacitor. So I think that's perfectly fine. I just went ahead and pulled that one random sample out of the board. It tests fine. So honestly, on this board, I can't find any issues with capacitors. I've unsoldered the five main filter caps and they all test perfectly fine. I did a random sample and just pull one cap out of the board. It tests great. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and clean the optical pickup and lube the sled and spindle motors. I'll pop a disc in it and see if it wants to play or not. And since I'm in here, I think I'll go ahead and clean up this nasty looking fuse over here. I'll go ahead and just remove it from the board, stand it upright and solder it back in place so it doesn't look too terribly bad. All right, the fuse is remounted. It looks much better than it did before. Let's take a look at the bottom. There's the bottom. I cleaned it up as best I could. Had a bunch of scrape marks on it, but what are you going to do? Anyhow, all the caps are resoldered. Well, let's go ahead and put a drop of oil on the spindle motor bushing. Run it up and out a few times to make sure the oil gets actually into the bushing. And I'll grab a cotton swab and we'll try to sop up the excess. Next, I'll go ahead and clean the optical pickup. I have a cotton swab just moistened with glass cleaner. What I do is I dip it in the glass cleaner and then I shake it off. And we'll go ahead and clean the optical pickup. Circular motions. Then it will dry the optical pickup with the other end, the clean end, the dry end. Once again, circular motions. So I want to go ahead and lube the sled motor as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and pry the gear up slightly. That way I can get my oiler up underneath it. Just a little smidge of oil on there. Lift it up and down a few times to get it down into the bushing. And then I'll press the gear back down. So when I press it down, I put my screwdriver underneath it to make sure it didn't go down too terribly far. And then I wanna make sure there's no cracks in these gears at all, because that does happen on these things. No, they look absolutely fine. All right, well, let's go ahead and put the covers back on it and fire it up and see what happens. One thing I did notice before I put this back together is this rubber bumper right here. This is what allows the mechanism to kind of float on here. It's a little shock absorber. I did notice this one had been assembled incorrectly and it wasn't allowing the mechanism to sit flat. So I'm wondering if that might have been the whole problem, but I didn't test this beforehand. I wanted to check the capacitors and see how they check before I did anything else. So now it's assembled correctly. What had happened was on this bumper, it had gotten folded up 
inside like that before it was put back together so I had to pull it back apart and straighten it out. So that could have been a contributing factor as to why this thing wouldn't play if the mechanism wasn't sitting flush and the disc was scraping that could definitely be a very big problem. Press the start button. Well, it read the disc. Let's watch the intro. Well, so far, so good. Battle station, battle station, unidentified spacecraft inbound from Delta Line, Area 3. Number unknown, but increasing. All still feet squadron scramble immediately. Repeat, scramble now. Squadron 207, scramble now. Rendezvous with squadron 279 and 333. Take a position for basic submission. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Well, so far, it's playing just fine. Well, the game's playing perfectly. I don't see any lagging, any uh, dropouts or anything like that. So anyhow, there you go. The repair on the Sega CD. I really think it was just that bumper that was giving it problems more than anything else. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video on the repair on the Sega CD. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. Remember, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the questions and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. 
Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this little video. I really do appreciate it. Bye bye. Game Albert.